Hello and welcome to a unique episode of Queer Up Roadshow. Considering that all the apples listed here are susceptible to Fire Blight and Scab, with one exception, only the agronomic traits will be covered since there's also historical breeding aspects in all of them as well. Let's get started. Our first cultivar is called Rome Beauty. It was first called Gillette Seedling, found by Joe Gillette, a carpenter and shoemaker who wanted to start an orchard. He purchased 100 young apple trees from the company Putnam Nursery in Ohio. One tree did not match his shipment and was given to his son, Alan's son, Gillette, who planted it along the bank of a river. Several years later, it was found with unique fruit, and his cousin, Horatio Nelson Gillette, began propagating them via cutting. It was renamed Rome Beauty and gained popularity as a cooking apple. It is rumored to be a descendant of Westfeld, seek no further, but it remains unknown if that's the case. What is known is that the University of Purdue in Indiana made extensive use of this cultivar. The foundation stock that is repeatedly crossed with other cultivars of apple consists of seedlings made by crossbreeding a crabapple species called Malus floribunda and Rome Beauty together. Indeed, all of the PRI apples bred from this program have Rome Beauty somewhere in its parentage. Due to its susceptibility to not just all diseases, but to water core, I have to give it a 2 out of 3 for agronomic traits, although it still does well in terms of storage and crops reliably annually, for a total of 2 out of 3. Now on to the next cultivar. Indeed, a study of 439 cultivars of apple from across the world indicated that around 13% of all cultivars of apple contain Cox Orange Pippin. The cultivar Melinda was first bred in the mid-1800s by Laban Rollins and named after one of his daughters, Melinda. His eldest son, Irvin Rollins, introduced the crop to Homestead near Plainview, where it became popular because of its taste and hardiness, although it fell out of favor by the mid-1970s. This cultivar has been extensively used in the Minnesota breeding program, with many apples being hybrids between Melinda and something else, with most of the apple cultivars within the Minnesota breeding program being descendant of Melinda. Even Honeycrisp has some pedigree that traces directly back to Melinda. Sweet 16 likewise also has pedigree in Melinda through the cultivar Frostbite, an open-pollinated Melinda seedling. Other unique apples such as Chestnut Crab are hybrids between Melinda and Crab Apple. As you can see, Due to its traits, it's been used extensively in Minnesota for breeding purposes. This is due to being a great storer and really cold hardy as well. Mixed views on the flavor of the apple itself lends me to take a point off the agronomic traits for a total of two out of three. Now onto the Cox Orange Pippin. This was raised by the retired brewer and amateur British horticulturist Richard Cox. In 1825, he planted some open pollinated seedlings of Ripson Pippin, as well as several seedlings made through crossbreeding Blenheim Orange and Cox Orange Pippin. One of these varieties called Cox Orange Pippin here was called Cox Pomona. It quickly became Cox Orange Pippin, the most commonly cited best apple in later dates. It's susceptible to everything under the sun, and it gets even worse in cold, or damp areas, like Canada, and cannot be grown very well in anything but a very dry climate. Due to these limited conditions, I have to give it a 1 out of 3. With its good storage and frost resistance being the only two positives agronomically that I can think of. Historically speaking though, it's been used extensively in apple breeding. And within Europe itself, almost half of the modern apples bred in Europe have Cox Orange Pippin in it. So from the perspective of breeding modern apples, it's very extensively used. One of the most common apples we grow today is the Gala. The Gala has Cox Orange Pippin as a grandparent, so it has big impacts in terms of breeding efforts in modern times. Now on to the discussion of Red Delicious and Black Gillyflower. This cultivar was first developed in the 1700s in Connecticut with some saying it was bred directly in the United States, with others saying it was obtained from the central western portions of 
Europe by the settlers over 100 years ago. There is no known parentage for this apple nonetheless, but it's speculated to be one of the possible pollen providers for what we now know as Red Delicious. Red Delicious, in terms of its parentage, was known as Yellow Bellflower as a maternal parent. The pollen parent, however, is a crapshoot between Black Gillyflower, Wine Sap, and Sheep No Sweet. It was found randomly in an orchard of Peru, Madison County in Iowa. Initially, they tried to kill it by cutting it down twice, but it kept on popping back up. It eventually bore fruit, but they could not market it because there was no one to market it to in that area. In 1893, the company Stark Brothers, a nursery in Missouri, wanted to find a bunch of new fruit varieties to be used in the nursery trade, and created a fair to do so. Jesse Hyatt, the owner of that farm, took advantage of this and brought some of the apples to that location. I mean the apple Hawkeye. It won first place. The following year, Stark Brothers purchased all rights to that apple, renaming it Red Delicious, although an intermediary name was called Stark Delicious. The original Hawkeye form is most tastiest of the bunch, but over 300 mutations have been made through sports on the tree. The Red Delicious itself is a sport of Hawkeye that was completely red. The original Black Gillyflower has short storage periods, but seems to crop well and bears fruit young. As such, I give it a 2 out of 3. Red Delicious, same deal, but due to its resistance to fire blight, as an extra bonus point, giving it a 3 out of 3. The original Hawking is apparently better flavored than its red sports, on a side note. Red Delicious can store quite well, both the original and the sport, and grows quite well, hence its common use. 36% of red in the specific rim region in modern times have Red Delicious in its parentage, and about 23% of modern cultivars of apple in the United States have Red Delicious in its parentage. Now on to the next cultivar. The next two cultivars will be Grimes Golden and its progeny Golden Delicious. It was found as a wild seedling on a farm of Thomas Grimes Sr. in Brooks County, West Virginia. It was first written about in 1857 by A.J. Downing under the name of Grimes Golden Pippin and later on it was just renamed Grimes Golden. There's a few individuals that speculate it came from the 1700s, and the fruit was sold to New Orleans traders long ago in the early 1800s, 1805 specifically. It's plausible that it grew from an unnoticed, discarded apple core, making the ancestry of this cultivar unknown. Its descendants, including Golden Delicious, resemble the original parent, with only moderate differences, such as a slightly sweeter flavor for Golden Delicious and a red blush. Golden Delicious was found as a chance seedling by J.M. Mullins, a progeny of Grimes Golden, which was growing in their farm area. It was found in 1891, and in 1914, some apples were sent to Stark's Nursery under the name Mullins Yellow Seedlings. It was believed to be a crossbreed between Grimes Golden and Golden Renette. The rights of this tree were purchased for $5,000, and was likewise called Stark Delicious, similar to Red Delicious. This was later split into both Red and Golden Delicious. Both store well and both are durable, as a tree is. Both are also only suited to warmer climates, making it ill-suited for most parts of Canada. Golden Delicious, however, has been used extensively in breeding projects. In the Pacific Rim region, which includes Japan, China, and Australia, as well as New Zealand, 55% of the cultivars bred in these areas have Golden Delicious within their pedigree. 18% in the United States and 36% in Western Europe. Now on to our next two cultivars, Yesipus Spitzenberg and Jonathan Apple. The Yesipus Spitzenberg was found in the mid-1700s as a seedling growing alongside banks of the Hudson River near a village called Esopus, now called Ulster County. In New York State. Seeds were collected by what is expected to be a Dutch or Swedish settler who wanted to establish colonies of fruit in eastern North America, a common practice at that time, since it was believed that there were no apples growing in the New World. The fruit's popularity began spreading quickly among the settlement, and by 1817, 
it was considered to be the best flavored apple within North America. It was grown quite often in Albany, where it grew the best, and was considered the best apple in the United States. And a challenge was made to find a better apple, which was taken up by its progeny, Jonathan. Like his ancestor, the Jonathan apple was first discovered as a Chan seedling in Ulster County in the early 1800s. Some suggest it was grown by a homesteader in Connecticut. Jonathan was used extensively in breeding programs in Western Europe and the United States. With 26% of Western Europe cultivars of apple contain Jonathan and its parentage in modern times, while 25% of the American cultivars bred in modern times have Jonathan and his pedigree. Jonathan stores poor den Esospus Spitzenberg, which lasts up to six months in storage, whilst Jonathan goes off shortly after being picked, making Jonathan ill-suited as a commercial cultivar. Both cultivars, however, are susceptible to the same diseases, which is to say all of them. And since Jonathan is not a cultivar that fruits early, that cannot be an explanation for why it doesn't last very long. Therefore, I have to give it a 1 out of 3 in terms of agronomic trait. Its ancestor, however, I give a 3 out of 3. The last cultivar on our hit list would be Famous and Macintosh. Famous was introduced to North America in the 1700s. There are two hypotheses on how this happened. One suggests there are seeds of a cultivar called Palm à Capot de Normandie, brought from France to North America, and became widespread during the French Indian War. During this time, there was a lot of houses burnt down, and many trees were destroyed in the process, gaining the nickname Chimney Apples due to many of them surviving the process. Another school of thought suggests that it was a seed of an art cultivar called Calval de Nage, and one seedling grew up, and Famous is a descendant of that seedling. The Macintosh, likewise, is a chance seedling found by John Macintosh, a loyalist who fled from New York State to Ontario in the 1770s, became a farmer in the Dundas County. In 1796, he found 20 apple trees growing wild. After transplanting them, all but one died, and was named Macintosh. Based on what we've got, it's plausibly a cross between Famous and Detroit Red. In terms of Famous, I give it a 2 out of 3 for flavor, due to the fact that it tastes like a combination of a Macintosh and caramel, and has really good agronomic traits such as cold hardiness and good cold storage. As for the Macintosh, I may show my bias here, but I'm giving it a 1 out of 3 because I'm not a big fan of its flavor, and I find it bruises too easily. Also, it becomes mealy very quickly. Otherwise, make your own opinion on this one, and this decision may be highly contentious among my viewers. From a breeding perspective, however, around 57% of the cultivars bred in modern times in Canada have Macintosh in its parentage. Approximately 30% of American cultivars have Macintosh in its pedigree, and about 27% of European cultivars have Macintosh in its pedigree. Indeed, 64% of study cultivars of modern times have Golden Delicious, Macintosh, Jonathan, Cox Orange Pippin, or Red Delicious in their pedigree. And that will covers everything. Thank you for watching.